Okay, so the Chem Catalyst launches, launches the lesson, as Jeffrey said, and it also gives you a chance to uh, get situated for the new class that has come in. The students are asked to do this in, in, to answer the questions in groups, and then you'll debrief it. So in this case, as you saw in the picture on the last slide, we're throwing a gold ring into water, and we're throwing a little piece of salt or salt cube into water. And here are the questions that I'd like you to think about and maybe start uh, typing some answers. What do you think your students would say? If you're to drop salt into a glass of water, what would happen? If you were to drop a gold ring into a glass of water, what would happen? And if different things happen, why do you think that's the case? So I wonder what some of the uh, things that... Okay, so I'm that, seeing some responses come in. Um, We've got one response saying some students might say that the salt would disappear. Um, oh, yeah. Another person is saying that students might say, what do you think, uh, so Nicole is saying, what do you think your students might say? Yeah, so that's definitely something that they might say. It, it would disappear. Uh, any, had, anyone else want to chime in on that? Yeah, both Catherine and Melissa agree that it would disappear. Steve suggests that the ring would rust over time. Catherine so says the gold are, ring would drop to the bottom. So these are possible student responses, things that you might hear your students say about these. And, you know, it's, it's, whether they're correct or incorrect isn't important. It's more about gathering information. And, and what we would normally do is we would follow up with some other questions. You know, you might actually do this demonstration. We know that salt goes in and it disperses throughout the liquid. We're going to have to learn what that actually means. And we know that the gold ring is, maybe it will rust or something of that type, but it's pretty much if it's just dropped in, you're going to be able to pick it back out again. And so now the question that we want to get the students to think about is, why do the atoms in these two substances behave differently? What do you, why do you think the gold atoms stay together? Any, any thoughts on that about what your students might? Let's see. We have one answer that says the gold atoms are stronger than salt. Another that the gold, oh, nope, that was there twice. So the, the gold bonds are stronger than the salt bonds. Yeah, and that's the type of thing that we hear from students. And they might begin to use the word bond, but really uh, many students will just say, well, they're stuck together somehow. Um, and so let's move into the lesson now, and let me explain to you what we're going to do, and then we'll work through the activity as best we can with the slides. So I would ask the students to work in pairs and to wear safety goggles at all time. And here are two words that we're going to start to use, um, and we're going to start to try to understand in more detail what they mean. Dissolve, which means that the substance disperses evenly into another substance. For example, a solid can dissolve in a liquid, meaning that you can't see the solid anymore because it's dispersed throughout. Um, and of course, we're going to have to take a look at some point in the lesson about the misconception of the fact that some students will think it's actually disappeared. But there will be evidence in the lesson that maybe that's not the case. And then conductivity that describes how well a substance um, transmits electricity or allows uh, electrons to flow through it. So the way we're going to do the lesson is we're going to use a simple conductivity tester. This is a little 9-volt battery that has a snap connector on top, and it's hooked up with one end to uh, one of these holiday light bulbs. And on the next slide, what you see is if you connect the two ends, you actually see the light lights. And I guess I'd like to point out that there's a circle uh, where the electrons can flow through in a, in a complete loop. Now, if you break those two wires apart um, on the slide before this one, Jeffrey, if you break those two, yeah, if you break them apart, um, then the light bulb is no longer um, lit up. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take those two ends and we're going to test lots of different materials to see whether they conduct or not. And the way this is set up is some material that's in the bottle, bottom of a cup, any kind of cup will do, a glass cup, a paper cup, and we put two paper clips um, hooked over the sides of the, of the cup, and then we use our tester to see if we can connect up the um, entire loop where we go from the battery through a paper cup through the substance in the bottom of the container 
up through the paper clip again, around through the light bulb, and back to the battery. And what we're testing is whether the substance in the, in the uh, cup will actually conduct electricity. All right, so now we purposely chose materials that you're familiar with, and the questions of, for these five materials are, will they dissolve? Will they conduct? And what kinds of predictions you have? And so what you see, um, we've just taken a short list. We actually have 10 substances that the students will be testing. We have distilled water, salt, uh, sand, aluminum foil, and sugar. And so on the, on the next slide, what you see is a table that we're going to slowly fill out with you today. And on the left side, there are predictions. So you see the substances are listed down the left-hand side. And by the way, we're very careful to explain to the students what each of these substances are. This is kind of a shorthand um, for this webinar. Um, we have predictions. Do they conduct? And then do they dissolve? And then we're going to go on and do some experiments. So I don't know whether we want any predictions at this point, but um, water is always an interesting one to do. Of course, water will dissolve in itself, but what do you think students say about whether it will conduct or not? Any thoughts on that? I know what my college students say. <laughs> they, they actually think the water will conduct. Um, and then you can go down the whole list and fill these in. Um, they have some experience with aluminum and with copper wire, and they know that the aluminum foil has some experience as to whether it will dissolve or not. The C12H22O11 is sugar, so they have some experience with that. Sand, SiO2, they've all been to the beach, so they have some experience with that. Okay, so we're going to get a, a variety of um, possibilities. So. Here's the first one that we're going to look at. Will it conduct? And I've already indicated that what the students often say is that it does conduct. So let's test it out. So we put the, um, our battery tester in there. And what we observe, often to the surprise of the students, at least in my experience, is that it does not conduct. OK? All right. Um, and so the, what the students would do then is fill in, does it the results part of this. So for water, does it conduct? No. Does it dissolve? Well, yeah, water will dissolve in itself. And does it conduct when it's dissolved? Well, no, because it's still water. So let's go on to aluminum. Will it conduct? Yep, it definitely conducts. So yes, is filled in there. Will it dissolve? Well, I hope You've had experience with aluminum foil, as students have, and if you pour water in, um, you're still going to have a aluminum foil in the bottom of the container. So no, it won't conduct. And will it conduct when dissolved? Well, that's not really applicable because it didn't dissolve. All right, so we move on to the next one is sugar. Will it conduct? We try it with our battery tester. The light bulb does not light, so it does not conduct. And students would then um, ask the question, will it dissolve? Well, they should have experience with sugar, so some amount of sugar um, does dissolve. And then the question is, once it's dissolved, so we have a no on does it conduct, we have a yes on does it dissolve, and then the question is, does it conduct when it's dissolved? And so we can take the solution now, and we can put our battery tester in, and no, it does not conduct when dissolved. All right. So, so just take a moment, look at the table. We have on the first line a no, yes, no. Then we have a yes, no, no, and then a no, yes, no. Um, interesting that the first one and the third one actually seem to have a similar pattern. And that's what we're going to start to look for as we accumulate this, these data. Are there any patterns? 